Crick Buzz centre stage, Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan in the middle of heading league. 24 hours ago we said we were set up for potentially a classic Ashes battle, something like 2005. Who was to know? 1981, we discussed that as well. Wasn't, was it? All out 67 England. We're getting very used to this. England getting embarrassed with the bat, telling scores in the double digits, and this was a terrible time to pick one of those days. Well, 2019 will be remembered for, you know, just the batting collapse. You know, you mentioned 205, 81, dramatic series. I thought we were in for one, but, you know, England's batting is just so inconsistent. You know, one week they dig in, played the test match way. Mm. Then they arrive a few days later, Australia with 179 on the board, three high-class seam bowlers, just dig in. You know, it's not rocket science at Leeds. You know, there's a whiteboard in the back there in the dressing room. I'm sure it'll just say, you know it's going to do a bit for half an hour, just dig in. It might do a bit for 30 hours, just dig in. Just get yourself there for the mid-afternoon when the sun's shining. It was the perfect batting split. Actually, before the match this morning, there was three or four on the pitch saying, this is a bit unfair, actually. For what Australia had to bat in yesterday to what England are going to bat in today, that's just unfair on Test Match cricket. You know, everything's going England's way. There was a few reviews going England's way. And then to come out and bat in that fashion, that carrot that just gets dangled, just on and around off stump, mm. what are you going to do with it? Are you going to leave it? Are you going to defend it? No, I'll tell you what we'll do. Whee! We'll have a big drive at it. And when you're up against high class, and I have to say the Aussie bowl in the lines, you know, you talk of here about length, you do have to get the length right, but it's the line that you bowl here at Henley. You have to bowl off stump line. And those three for Australia were absolutely magnificent. Yeah, there's so much to pull out of today, isn't there? Let's start with the Australian fast bowlers. We've never seen Cummins, Hazelwood and Pattinson in the same 11 at the same time. Joffre Archer, it felt like he was about to drag the Ashes back England's way yesterday, 6 for 45. But those three big Australian quicks, we've been waiting for a decade for them to be on the same field at the same time. They didn't disappoint. No, high class. I mean, they've got pace. Um, they, they bowl great channels. They've got great skill levels. I mean, Joe Danley must have played the mist at 15 or 16, and not just the outside edge, the inside edge, because of those nit backers that Cummins and, and Hazelwood was bowling, and it's the tone that they set. You know, from ball one, you, you never feel they're going to bowl you a little floaty one or just give you one on the hip or a nice, juicy, short, wide one. The channels are great, their energy is great, the attitude looks absolutely spot on. Uh, and you say it's the first time that they bowled together, it, it ain't going to be the last because I would say that they're going to get wheeled out again at Old Trafford in a week or so's time. It, it felt as though, even though it was great batting conditions, it almost felt Australian. The deck was hard, it was carrying through to the slips, a couple of sharp chances taken by David Warner back there. So maybe counterintuitively, it actually suited Australia to bowl when the sun was out. Yeah, I mean, and that can happen, but. You know, you just know as a, as a batting unit here, I mean, you talk to any Yorkshire player, uh, you talk to any ex-England player, you just know that it's going to do something. So you've just got to hold your end. You've got to just try and play for your off stump. You've got to say, right, the first spell's yours. You can have the first spell. You know what, you might be able to have the second spell. Mm. But if you're coming down that hill or up the hill in your third spell, then it's my time. You know, you ask Geoffrey Boyk about batting here, just give him three hours. Let him have three hours. You can have it. But I tell you what, if I play with discipline, leave the ball nicely, play with good defence. By the time I get to the 45th over of the, the innings, well, then I can cash in and start to exploit and try and put you under a bit of pressure. But if you try and take that new ball on, particularly on the front foot, Headley history tells you, you've got no chance. Speaking of Headley history, the, the captain of England does play for Yorkshire. Two ducks on the trot. Got a great ball today. Didn't get a bad one last week at Lords either, to be perfectly honest. Mm. It, it, does it feel sometimes as a captain when the pressure is so heavily on your shoulders that these, these I don't want to say luck, but these unfortunate occurrences start following you around a little bit? Yeah, and he, and he dropped that quite simple chance at slip as well. It's not been a good week for the skipper. You know, he'll be the first to admit. I mean, you know, the England team have just been in the dress room. You know, Graham Thorpe's just done the media, but it was 20 minutes after play. I think there's been some stern words in that dress room. Look, he's a captain under pressure. You know, you can't hide behind the fact that when you've lost an Ashes series in Australia for zip, you've got to come here to England and, and, and win this series. You know, unfortunately for him, his team, I can't see how they win this game. So Australia will re retain the Ashes. Can they win the last two test matches to just draw the series? That'll be hell of an effort from this position. Uh, I'll say, I, I didn't like him moving to three, I said it at the time, he's a number four batsman. You know, Virat Kohli bats four. If India are going through problems, does Virat go to three? No, he stays at four. Steve Smith, will he go to three? No, he stays at four. Joe Root should have stayed at number four. And it's the problem area of one, two and three that England have to try and iron out because it's not to the captain, me and the best player, to move his position to cover up the cracks of one, two and three. He should have stayed at four. I think he should go back to four in the second innings. 
you know, why not change your order for the second innings? Jason Roy clearly is going to struggle at the top of the order. Yeah. Uh, put De Denley to open, put Jason Roy to three, just give him one down. He'll probably be in the first few overs, but you never know. Give him a one down chance, put Joe Root back to number four and just see. Just see if it can help him. Just get back to his play that we know he's such a high quality player. He'll be back in the runs, but I just see him at, uh, as a number four. England did scrap hard with the ball. They've taken six second, week, second innings wickets of Australia. Australia are 283 ahead, but it, it does sort of feel like even if they got them all in quarter of an hour tomorrow morning, that England just don't have the right component parts to chase anything remotely like that. I don't think they've got enough players playing well enough. You know, to, to chase down 200 in Test cricket, you need two or three that are playing well. Uh, to chase 300, you're going to need four or five, maybe six players to play well. England haven't got enough players in decent form. You know you've had a bad day when the biggest cheer and the best moment for English cricket to date, the Friday of the Headley Test, was Joff Archer nicking a melon off a steward and throwing it back on the terrace. You know when you're getting the biggest cheer for that, your team has had a, a very difficult day. So Joffre is a superstar, he's bringing joy. I loved it, I loved the, the fact that he ran 80 yards to get the melon and throw it back onto the terrace. But the fact that I'm even talking about that tells you that England have had a stinker. <laughs> Ben Stokes bowled a really long spell towards the end of the day, picked up uh, the wickets that were needed to give them some faint hope. You wouldn't want to see Ben Stokes bowling a spell that long too often though, would you? He is the team's all-rounder, he is there to make runs as well. Well, I remember Andrew Flintoff bowling a, a similar spell in 05 at the Oval all morning, I think it was a Sunday morning, and bowled Australia out, you know, but for Ben Stokes to have done that there, you know, on the back of such a, a big summer for all the bowlers, uh, England have got to be very careful. You know, Joffrey Arch has bowled too many overs. Jack Leach has got to do more bowling. You know, the spinner's got to hold an end. You know, on an afternoon like today, you've got to hope that your spinner can hold an end. You can rotate the seamers. Uh, they played him quite nice. I thought he was quite unfortunate. I thought the LBW off Matthew Wade that was given that out, they reviewed it. Boy, it looked look pretty out to me, right back to a length ball. Um, but your spinner has to help you out on days like this. You can't give your bowlers 27.5 overs rest. You know, if you're in that dressing room, my message is always with the team, look, we bat for our bowlers. You know, we as a batting group, we bat for our bowlers because we have to give them rest. They're the, they're the buggers that have to run up, put all their energy in. They've got to bowl the opposition out. They've got to get 20 wickets. We've got to give them rest. For them to only have 27 points, I can imagine that dressing room might be bowlers, batsmen, and the bowlers should be just lobbing things at the batsmen, just spraying them, just splattering them with anything they can find in the dressing room because, you know, you don't want fractions in any team, and when you get that, it's a nightmare. But I could just understand today exactly what those bowlers are feeling towards the batsmen because... You know, you ask Stuart Broad what he wants from a batsman, he just wants someone to dig in. Mm. Just dig in, please. Just give me a day in that dressing room, having a cup of tea, having a massage. Let me come at the Aussies tomorrow. For him and Archer to only have had one session rest, it's not good enough. A dirty day for England, the day where Australia probably all but retained the Ashes. Adam Collins, Michael Vaughan, Crickbus Centre Stage. We'll find out over the weekend.